And it looks like we are live. Hi there. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Giannotti, and I am a, oh, man, I can't even think straight. Uh, my name is Mike Giannotti. I'm a Microsoft Teams technical specialist uh, for Microsoft out of the Northeast. If you know me, you know this is not my normal voice, uh, so I'm fighting a bit of a cold. Uh, but today is the first of three Ask Me Anything AMAs. I am joined by several of my colleagues and so i'm going to go ahead and introduce them uh, before we get started though just to let you know you should see in your pane of view there over to the right hand side is our q a panel you can ask us anything during this q a uh, we do have a real brief you know maybe 10 minute presentation in the beginning that we're going to go through but certainly you know fire off your questions as you have them this is your time as you're looking at microsoft teams if you have challenges that are stopping deployment um you're looking for you know answers around various pieces this is the time to get those answered anything we can't answer we will follow up and we'll be posting out with the archive of this video so to get the day started though real quickly i'm going to kick over to introduce my next colleague and here she comes. There we go. Sam, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Hello, everyone. My name is Sam Brown. I'm a Teams technical specialist and I cover healthcare customers all over the East Coast based in the New York office. So if you do have any questions, again, like Mike said, go ahead and post them. and I'm happy to help answer. And coming up next, we have Mr. Pete Anello. Uh, Pete Anello, I'm also a Teams uh, technical specialist with the Healthcare Life Sciences organization on the East Coast, and uh, I'm I'm based out of Philadelphia. All right, and so we are going to kick over here to our slides, but real quickly, uh, just so everybody knows, also if you have not only questions, but we'd love to hear and know where you're uh, watching us from. So if you can give us a shout out there, let us know and we'll recognize you during our time. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and pull up Pete's quick presentation and then we're just gonna take questions. So start firing away. And Pete, go ahead and let me know when to... We'll do so. Thanks, Mike. Um, so as we mentioned, this is the first of three uh, ask me anything and in the beginning of each we're just going to do a little five to ten minute presentation on areas that we find have been particularly important topics for customers um, and really obviously with five to ten minutes you know we're not going to go into intense details um, but the idea here is to provide you guys out there with the resources to be able to you know answer questions for yourselves educate yourselves um, and be and be more prepared. So the goal really is to try to teach you guys to fish a little bit. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, today's agenda, very simple. You know, Office 365 and Teams networking requirement. You know, Teams is a part of Office 365, uses a lot of the Office 365 services on the back end. So it's, it's important to come to that with a sort of a holistic point of view. Um, a real particular focus is the real-time communications because this is where customers usually say that they have a bad time, either with audio, video, or desktop sharing. Um, and then we have a bunch of other resources that we won't dive into here, but we'll provide provide you guys that information as, as sort of a follow-up. And of course, ask questions at any time. Exactly. Um, Key learnings, you know, really, you know, at a high level to keep it simple, um, you know, we want our client to connect to our network as soon as possible. So whether that's Outlook or the Teams client, the goal is really to get you there as fast as you can. Um, plan and provide sufficient bandwidth, you know, whether you're going to be doing audio, video, des desktop sharing. You know, we find with as Teams usage grows, so does video usage, which is something that's important to understand. If your users start to use that more and more, you know, you want to make sure that they have a good experience with that. A um, couple other things I added on to there, we won't really be covering today, but they are equally important. Um, 
a whole site dedicated to teams quality. Um, there's the call quality dashboard and call analytics, which are the two primary tools that administrators will use to have a good understanding of the quality of experience within their environment, as well as great troubleshooting and insights. This deck I'm using today, I took out of the team's admin training site for the, the network readiness training. Um, this is a really outstanding deck with a lot of resources. The one we're using today, I really abbreviated down, but we'll provide the full, the full deck, uh, you know, as part of our follow-up. Next one's good, Mike. Okay, self-explanatory network requirements. So there are a lot of things to consider when it comes to media quality. You know, there's the environmentals. If you're sitting in Penn Station, you know, coming through your laptop, you know, uh, speakers and mic, you know, it's going to, it's not going to be a good experience no matter what, right? You know, so endpoints, environmentals, you know, those types of things are also very important. But for the focus of this session, we're really focused at, you know, focused in on the network element. Go ahead to the next one, please. So this is, you know, this is the true for all of Office 365. You know, we have a very large global network um, and our goal is to get you to connect to us as quick as possible. Um, within the further details, we have a lot of the details associated with this, but because this is really meant to be high level, we wanna open up time for questions. I won't get it, go into them very deeply here. But the idea is pretty simple. We have a global network and our goal is to get you onto our network as fast as possible. Next one, please. So we categorize traffic in Office 365 and for the sake of teams for audio, video, application sharing, the optimized portion of this slide is what's particularly important. All of these true are, are, are true for Office 365, but to optimize are particularly true for the real time communications traffic. Um, because if there's issues there, that's where users identify it the most quickly. You know, canary in the coal mine, there's a lot of coal mine. There's a lot of uh, analogies out there, but I, I think you get my point. Um, next one, Mike. So at a high level, you know, we want to ensure that we have solid connectivity to all IPs and port ranges for Office 365. And we want to make sure that you're routing that traffic to Office 365 in a very in the most efficient way, right? And then, you know, what kind of quality do you have on your network? Is there a lot of latency? Is there jitter? Is there packet loss? And if so, how severe is it? and then take remediative actions, right? Um, but then there's also how much bandwidth am I going to need? I mentioned early, earlier, we see video usage going up. So that also means bandwidth usage is going to go up. So the first two are really quite easy. You know, they're, they're, they're primarily, you know, network configuration, firewall configuration. Uh, the second one is having an understanding of the quality of experience within your environment today. And the third one is really making sure you have sufficient bandwidth. Next one, please. Thank you, Mike. Um, so again, you can see here it says uh, only media traffic is in the optimized category of teams. That goes back to my previous slide. You know, we're looking at the real time media, right? Because if users don't have a good time there, then it really, it really compromises the overall experience. So, you know, keep in mind Teams is built on Office 365, you know, the aka.ms slash 0365 endpoints give you a complete list of all of our networks and all of the ports we use across our entire service. Um, but in particular for Teams, you know, you, you can see we have four UDP ports, two IP ranges, and best practice is to avoid proxies, traffic, sh sh uh, shapers, um, anything that's going to essentially affect that traffic flow, you know, from the Teams client to the cloud or from the Teams client to another user, anything in the way could potentially cause problems. So we really want to optimize that traffic and bypass those devices. Next slide, please. 
So this slide here gives you guys uh, what Microsoft's targets are for latency, um, you know, jitter and packet loss. Uh, these are our targets for good qual call quality. Um, the AKA.MS performance requirements will provide more details around this, um, but this is an area I mentioned call quality dashboard a little bit earlier. This is an area where call quality dashboard can help you have very good insights into where you are having these types of issues. You know, what locations are they identified with? You know, maybe it's a maybe it's an issue with a, a known a known problem with the client version. Maybe there's a driver issue. Maybe it's a network issue. Um, but you know, the call call quality dashboard will help you identify you know why you have jitter and where. Um, and then obviously, you know, after you investigate it, you'll need to take appropriate steps to resolve it. Next slide, please. So this is the per user bandwidth requirements we have for Teams. Um, you can see we have from 30K to, to, to 1 MBS, you know, for, for high quality HD and, and video. Um, the, the site at the bottom goes into great detail for preparing your network. Um, including, you know, tools that we have available, like the network planner. If you go to the next slide, Mike. So, so network planner, this is, we had a previous network planner on the fast track site that many of you may have used before. Um, we've updated it and we've made it part of the team's admin portal. Uh, so it's a it's it's a very good uh, very good tool to help you identify what type of bandwidth utilization and what your requirements are within your organization. Uh, you can you build out essentially your your network topology as well as your user personas, um, and you put it all together. And along with some you know special magic that happens on the back end, we provide you a report that helps you identify what you're going to need for the usage you expect, for the users you expect. Um, the link for details on Network Planner is also within the deck. And the one thing I want to point out that's in that um, uh, do documentation, which is really nice, is there's a downloadable uh, PowerPoint sample of, a of going through a network planning uh, session within the Network Planner. So it takes it helps you if you've never done it before, sort of go through it and have something that, you know, like a recipe that you can follow, you know, side by side. Next, please, Mike. So real time communications, I just wanted to sort of, uh, you know, hammer out, you know, why we we talk about these things the way that we do. Um, you know, real time communications is really part of that, you know, optimized media workload we were talking about earlier. And that means audio, video, desktop sharing, right? So, you know, we can pick on email. You know, if you get an email 30 seconds late, it's it's not a big deal. But, you know, if you, if you have, you know, any sort of significant delay on any type of media, your users are going to identify that in any number of ways, right? So, they all boil down to a bad experience, right? It can they can they can form many ways. They can have many root causes, but at the end of the day, it means the user is like, hey, that that meeting or or that call I just had with Mike didn't go very well, right? And that and and that is because those workloads are a little more sensitive than some of the other workloads because of how because of their real time nature, right? And this is one of the reasons why we emphasize making sure the network is straight, making sure you have your firewall rules, making sure that you are routing your data correctly. Um, because for instance, if you can't, one of the things that we see happens a lot is if the firewall ports aren't open, you know, that UDP session, which is, as it says here, fire and forget, you know, that UDP session would ultimately turn into a TCP session, which requires a lot more network overhead to keep it going, right? So TCP versus UDP is a very simple uh, uh, safeguard that our customers can take to ensure that they have good quality. It's a, it's, it's a simple change, but if that UDP can't be established and you go to TCP, then, you know, then your packets get resent and it causes all sorts of delays. Next one, Mike. 
So Teams obviously prefers UDP, send it and forget it. You want those packets to just go and if something doesn't come in time, you just want it to be dropped, right? TCP, if something doesn't come in time, it'll essentially put the brakes on so everything comes in time and then delivers it in order. UDP, you just want it to go. It's quick and it's efficient. And the one exception is live events. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Live events is a TCP stream. That kind of sums it up where I really wanted to go to give you guys a very high level. You know, um, I, we wanted to make sure that we had a lot of time dedicated to the, the Q&A. Um, but at a high level, you know, you just you, you want to get to our network as fast as possible. You want to do it without with as little things in the way as possible. Right. And you want to have a good understanding of what your bandwidth utilization is going to be. So we have a lot of resources within this deck that will provide you when we provide the recording for the deck that you can go through and, and look through yourselves. Um, but there are a ton of resources there to help you. That's it for so me, at, Mike. At this time, I guess we, we have questions teed up. Sam, did you want to tee those up for him? Yeah, definitely. So thanks, Pete. We have a few questions in here. A couple from Vincent. Um, one about do we have a new bandwidth calculator or fast track site available for teams similar to the bandwidth calculator 2.70 and network planner for fast track? Yeah, so the use of the network planner for Microsoft Teams is the replacement or the upgrade for the fast track bandwidth calculator. Awesome. OK, and, and again, if anybody has follow up questions to any of these, keep posting, keep sending them. Uh, another one from Vincent is, what do you recommend for performance requirements when it comes to VPN teleworkers? that are required to connect to O365 internally via express route connections? I mean, in an ideal world, I mean, I, I don't know the scenario on why express route is being used in that situation, but in an ideal world, a remote user, um, whether they are on VPN or off VPN, would use their local internet egress to get to Office 365. That, that, that's an ideal state. In your circumstance, it sounds like, you know, user VPNs in, it backhauls their traffic to a data center, which has an express route connection to Office 365 and goes that way. So that will work, you know, provided you have the ports open and you've planned it well, and you can have good quality under that experience, you know, again, provided it was planned well and you have sufficient bandwidth, but, if you think about it, that causes all of that traffic to backhaul over the VPN tunnel and then essentially into a data center and then all up to a specific circuit to Office 365. Whereas if that user was like me, I'm, I'm in Philadelphia, I'm Comcast gig, gig internet, just going out Comcast directly to get to Office 365 would be a much more efficient, efficient way. But organizations have express route implemented for lots of reasons. So I, I don't want to tread too deeply on that on Express Route. Well, the other one we have is, will the network planner allow for planning for a particular location or only the overall network? So it's for you. Can, so the idea is all of your your network is essentially a series of locations, right? So you know, you can have, you know, um, Seattle, you know, Microsoft Seattle headquarters plus the Philadelphia office. You can break it out into all of your offices. Um, it kind of depends on how your organization is set, but typically the network planner is by location, right? Because that's where all of your connectivity points are going to be. Cool. I think I answered that one. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Uh, so Vincent, I know the next one, I don't know if you have a particular question about that one, if you want to go off mute or just um, reply directly in the chat, but that we'll go ahead to David's question. Um, 
Teams is not just Skype for business replacement. It also adds other features like forum discussion and Slack, as well as real-time IMing, voice, conference, and screen sharing. So are all, are all these different features different licensing levels? Uh, so that, that's a great question. Um, there is some licensing differences. Um, uh, we can provide the link. It, it's, it's, it's out there that identifies them. From a, from a team's perspective, um, and Mike can totally keep me honest here, but from a team's perspective, uh, if you're licensed, the only, well, it depends what you're licensed for, obviously, but it, let's say you're an E3 user, which is a pretty common licensing standard out there for most organizations. You, you'll have everything within Teams. You can use everything within Teams minus the PSTN, uh, being able to send and receive PSTN calls like a soft phone and minus uh, an audio conference bridge in your meetings, which would be the, the dial in or callback capability within a Teams meeting. Um, those, those two PSTN uh, capabilities would be in addition to uh, E3, um, and they're both mutually exclusive. But Teams itself, uh, if, you're, if you're licensed for our enterprise suite, you, you, get, you get Teams. That's correct. <clears throat> That's correct. <laughs> Sorry about that. Great. That's all the questions we have right well, now. Why don't we, have yeah, any? start. If you got questions, fire away. Do you want to read off uh, some of the sh and shout out some of the people where we're getting them from? Yeah, we have a lot of representation. We have Akron, Ohio, Marianne from Pittsburgh. We Pittsburgh. have <laughs> I'm in Pittsburgh today for anybody tuning in. <laughs> nice. Marianne, you should just go on over to the office. <laughs> uh, we have Monterey, Mexico from Monterey University. David coming in from LA. Thanks for the question, David. Seattle, really close to our headquarters. Tata Communications. Shelly uh, met some of your representatives last week at our uh, meeting at DTA. Uh, so you're coming in from New Jersey. So yeah, we have a lot of good, good representation today. Nice. Any new questions, people? Fire away, this is the time. Oh, we got Cleveland, Ohio, anonymous. Cleve to the Cleve. <laughs> Somebody from Cleveland. Any more questions? People are being quiet today. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so while we're waiting, just, uh, just to let people know too. Um, so this is the first of three. The other two, you know, are, there's links off of these. Um, we're looking just to have open time for you to bring any of your questions around Teams. It doesn't have to be just networking. It can be around anything around deployment, around adoption, around case scenarios. We can talk through whatever, we can whiteboard. And we have a question. Do you want to go ahead and read that, Sam? Yes, another one from Vincent. So is there a way for us in the Teams policy or by other methods to control Teams bandwidth by the customer? So Vincent's noticed that there's a specific policy setting on bandwidth for Skype for Business. What's the best way to control bandwidth? So Teams, within the Teams meeting policy, you have the ability to control a per user bandwidth controls. Um, but the way the policies work is that they're assigned to the individual user, not a location, right? So if you have users in location X and that location is has notoriously bad internet and you want to limit them to very low resolution video, you can, through that policy, you can control the maximum bandwidth that they can utilize. So cool. So we got some, we got some questions piling in now. So from Josh, uh, what kind of client agents does it support? Are we talking teams? So, I'm assuming, right? Does that sound like a TUP? I would assume. So real quick, I mean, just from a, a quick perspective. So there are 
clients for the Mac and the PC. Both they're both based on Chromium, so you know it's, um, the Chromium engine is under the hood. And then we also have mobile views uh, via clients for uh, iOS and Android. And finally, you know if you have a modern HTML5 capable browser. Um, we do have a web-based version as well. So, you know, it's really around that anytime, anywhere, secure access uh, with Microsoft Teams. And I saw we had a, another question that had come in as well. Yeah, and Pete, and just to follow up, Josh, Pete actually has a list for you, a link for you in the um, in the chat. So check that out for more details. And the next question we have is, are you ever asked about ECDN for live events? <laughs> yeah, all the time. Um, in <laughs> fact, I, <laughs> so this, uh, so for the from the ECDN standpoint, Microsoft has three partners for live events: Collective, Hive, and Ramp. Um, any one of those three will work. They all are a little, slightly different in their licensing and slightly different in how they deliver. Um, I did meet with two of them over the last week when I was out at uh, our Microsoft Digital Transformation Academy. Um, but yeah, so if you are looking to, you know, really scale the delivery internally when you're doing um, a live event, which is different than the, the type of real time um, audio and video that happens within Teams typically, uh, we were because we're talking now webcasting and it's unicast. Uh, we do recommend that you take a look at them. It will. Uh, they, there's a couple of benefits. First of all, it does scale. Second of all, it also helps for stream content. At least the two partners I met with, which was uh, Collective and Hive, both of them do caching in that local area segment for up to 30 days, um, and I think you can adjust that. But the, the difference with that is that you're able to go ahead and with um, their agent, what will happen is if somebody watches an on-demand piece, right, instead of you have the other people in that local area uh, network segment, instead of them having to go out through the firewall to get it, uh, there'll be a local cache that they can actually uh, pull one or more caches that they can pull from within the segment. So again, it would minimize the traffic out through the firewall. Uh, but ECDN is, is a great way to help, you know, additionally uh, help with your scale and uh, being able to deliver those live events. Thanks, Mike. And David uh, was asking about writing a bot. And so Pete was just responding that they can be pretty simple, but also really complicated too, depending on what you want to do. So there's a link in there for um, creating bots um, and even some like low code or no code options too. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I'm, Pete's probably answer, uh, pinging this, but you know, if you look at uh, writing a bot, there's some real easy examples to get started with like FAQ bots. Um, there's even, <clears throat> excuse me, man, my voice is going. There's even um, an example one that you can take, it's a healthcare bot that's pretty robust out of the box, uh, that's been open sourced, but was developed uh, by Microsoft with doctors. Um, and then you can take that and, uh, you know, as is, or you can customize it, accentuate it. But we have a number of customers that are actually running that out on their public internet sites today. Uh, Vincent is asking, is it better to use QoS as a network policy or by client GPO or both in reference to Teams QoS recommendations? So yeah, there's, as of today, you do require Q, uh, group policy, but we're going to be updating some of the guidance shortly. Um, I'll send you the most recent guidance on Teams QoS deployment. There's also some some good stuff in the PowerPoint deck that will 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 come across for you that'll come across for you as well. Yeah, oh, it's going to be and and so so Vincent, yeah, so network policy, yeah, because you want sorry, you want your network equipment to honor it, right? 
Um, the client GPO, yes, you do you do need that today. You know, so the client pushes pushes them out, but um, we're working on a, 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 a simpler approach through the admin portal for you guys, which should be coming really, really soon. And is what you described about bandwidth limitation and policy the media by trade that defaults to 50,000? Could you explain that a little bit more? Yes, that, that's exactly it. OK. And anonymous, but someone is saying, my network guys always tell me we've got plenty of bandwidth internal to our locations. You don't need QoS. Should I challenge that? Uh, so my, my, my question to your organization would be how important is quality? Right. If if quality is important, then yes, you should implement QoS. If if you don't care if you have bad experience, then don't. Right. I mean, just because there's plenty, uh, you know, that's not that's not a reason. You know, and my my professional opinion is QoS should always be delivered. But my my response question is how important is quality to you? And if it's important, if the answer is that it's important, then the answer is then yes, you should implement it. Vincent, we're loving all the questions. Okay. Yeah, so Vincent, I got this. I well, cool. do I have to? I should I read it out loud? Yeah, I think just um, for people it, that it, are listening. Sure. It's, Vincent has a question about the performance difference between Skype for Business and Teams. Are they significant? For example, example is desktop sharing bandwidth consumption parameters twenty percent better than Skype for Business desktop sharing? Uh, 